what's now Pakistan. It was originally called Gandhara. Yeah. And he was born to a Hesatrian father and a Bahrainian mother. And he, uh, he actually started off as a Masahika monk, if that's correct. And then later on, him and his half-brother, who is uh, Asubuna. Asubanu. <laughs> well, they started up the, uh, yeah, he, his brother started up as a Sarva Tad. What's the uh, Ravra. This is not Thomas the Ravra. Yeah. This is brought the names here. Mesubandu. Yeah. And then the two of them are credited for starting the Yogacara yeah. tradition. Mm -hmm. And the Vijna. Vada. Yeah. So what's the Vada? Um, I have that um, Asuka would spend years in meditation, often visiting the... Maitreya? Yeah. That the Matreva heaven? Yeah. And to see that, to see that heaven. And he was taught by... Um, I learned a lot about just how he uh, how he was raised and the different things that he he did. I couldn't find a lot on what the actual teachings were, but I found how he was taught and where he found his enlightenment. And he founded, or he became the grand monk of. Became the Grand Master of the Mahayan, where he created the uh, Mahayanist Amaharada. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, basically, in uh, thank you, in most of the religious the tradition, there's some myth, there's some legends, right? According to this monk story. He meditate at night. And when he's meditate, he somehow he went up to what that what called it to see the heaven. Remember we talked about to see the heaven? Remember that? This is one of the, the desire heaven. They live up to um, uh, more than nine hundred million years. So the this inner and outer uh, court of the peace to see the heaven where by Trey Bodhisattva, he said to teach uh, the consciousness school only, and he's the future Buddha that will come here on earth for the next um, 500 million years from now. So that's a point of the So again, every night, every night he went up there and come back and give a lecture uh, to the people. And um, according to the tradition, so this Bodhisattva taught him like uh, yoga, chara, bumri. Uh, that means the um, the commentaries about the consciousness. Yeah. And together with his daughter, he created that tradition. Okay, so let us move on to people one before I touch the contents today. Yes, uh, Aaron is not here. Okay. Now, um, Basubandu, this is most important figure too. Um, he's the half brother. Okay, Aaron is coming. <coughs> oh, not yet. No. Okay, anyway, so, uh, um, yeah, Basubandu is half brother of Isanga. I've heard his daughter study. 
uh, the uh, the round additions. I remember I mentioned to you that the big difference, the main difference between the goal the goal is to become arhats. Do I remember? To get out of the birth cycle. Okay, so to get out of the samsara the birth cycle. But the goal Mahayana is to become Buddha. <coughs> And you, in order to be Kambuddha, it is process. There's 52 stages of Bodhisattva. So you have to practice, you have to go step by step, ladder by ladder, uh, in order to reach to this Buddhahood. But everyone has that kind of potential. So the reason why, at first, uh, Vasubandhu, he follows these traditions, the rather traditions, traditions, to promote how we practice so that we can get our reverse cycle. But later on, his half brother, Aishanga, convinced him. So eventually, he would convert into Mahayana tradition, and he, 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 together with his brother, wrote many classes, classes uh, or commentaries about this school, yoga. Yoga Kara, that's been the um, the consciousness. That's been talk about Buddhist philosophy or Buddhist psychology. That's what we're going to talk uh, next. Okay. So that's the two of them is very famous in behind the Buddhist tradition too. Okay. So um, next one. Okay, uh, a consciousness. Well, what do you have there? It's understandable. Uh, yeah, I looked it up. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Uh, it's the uh, it's a eightfold network of awareness, mm -hmm. and uh, from what I can tell, different parts of the body have uh, different ways of contributing to the overall awareness of oneself. The eightfold network of awareness includes like uh, there's eye consciousness, mm -hmm. and then ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, mental consciousness, which the first five are kind of uh, <coughs> self-explanatory, you know, just very good senses and whatnot. And then you have mental consciousness, which is like thoughts and ideation mm -hmm. in your mind. And then uh, seven, diluted awareness. Mm -hmm. I was kind of confused that it gets a little more tricky there. It's mm -hmm. like uh, bad thoughts and whatnot. Like, yeah, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the eighth is the all-encompassing foundation consciousness. Is a memory and reflexive awareness okay. or storehouse consciousness involved in So that understandable or confusion? Do you understand this? Or confused? It's for the, the first part is easy, right? First part is easy to understand, right? Let me show this one here too. You know, right? So the eyes and the object has been the sight, right? The chair, table, and so forth, right? You can see, you can have the vision to see. The ear with the sound, the nose with the smell, the tongue with the taste, body with the touch, the signal, right? So this means they call eye consciousness. When the eyes see an object, let's say a table, it recognizes, right? Black, white, red, yellow, and so forth, right? And yeah, same. You listen to my sound. Or you listen to music. 
you recognize distinguish um, uh, you recognize pleasant and pleasant so far no smell you recognize the smell the calm as for the food <laughs> right and the body you touch right rough and smooth and so far and let me skip this one and go back so that you can that you can see uh, yeah, we have another one. It's my consciousness, my object, my my object. And let's say um, the way we think. Consciousness is a pure basic, the pure perception, identification, naming. You, uh, let me put this way for you to understand. Our body is like a house. When we close our eyes, it's like we close the door. Is that right? When we open the, our eyes, we see there. And we dis we disimulating, we recognize it. black, white, good, yeah, black, white, yellow, and so forth. And actually, the owner of the house is what we call the my object. It controls our sense. Through the eyes, we say eye consciousness. Through the ears, we say ear consciousness. You understand that? Right? So basically, it's just a number. It's just the pure perception of identifying things through our sense. You understand? The number seven here is special. especially the cell grasping the cell when it's only. So let's, let me put it this way. Um, let's say when they look at this lamp, right? And if they say, oh, I like it. So I, when, when I open my mind, so I, I see this, this red lamp, right? And I, and I think it, I like it. When they have the notion of like, I rest the, I, with the cell here, number seven, I, me, I like that lamp. And I rest the, that information, the, the lamp, and I put inside here put inside what they call a consciousness and storage. Make sense? Or even I don't like, I may rest uh, the negative, this positive side, and I may rest uh, the negative side too. Which means when, whenever I don't like or like, I rest the information here. If I don't pay attention, if I remain neutral, it won't stay here. Make sense? Like uh, when you go out, remember I told you many times, when you're out to see someone on the street, you have first impression, right? Right? Either you like a person or you don't like a person. Or if you don't pay attention, that's a different story. But even you pay, if you pay attention on that person, but most of the time you may not re remain neutral. Make sense? So when you see that person, if you like, you rest her here too. And if you don't like, you rest the Information here, that's just called the seat. So that in future, let me put this way for you to understand easily. So many, like um, many people will see us as a monk walking, walking around campus, and then at first they may have that kind of positive, negative impression about us. But later on, but let's say when they when they meet us, uh, let's say in Newville or or LA or so forth, they say, "Oh, I met that monk before." Understand that whether they have positive, negative impression about us. Because they, they blend the seed of that information in the storage consciousness. It makes sense? Right? So that because of seven, number seven, proper itself, this me. 
I, 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 through the eyes, I have, I have the vision. Through the ears, I have the hearing, preach, uh, hearing nature. So I can understand, I can see, I can hear, and so forth. And they get the information hidden in the side here. And later on, the next time, they will be compared. You see the feedback here, feedback loop. You understand that? So it's through, let's say, through the smell, right? Let's say through the, top, the taste. Let's say you, you like pizza, right? You have to chew, let's say, Pizza Hut or what else? Pizza Hut. Um, uh, the, uh, Papa John's. Papa John, uh, Domi Domino. Domino. Domino, and so forth. So you test all of them already. So let's say you pick up Pizza Hut. Right? You may not like all the brand name, right? So with your test, you test all of them, and you like Pizza Hut brand name, right? Mm -hmm. You see that? You test through your tongue, and you recognize it's, it's, it's delicious. And you say, oh, I like it. And you stop here. So next time when you go to Europe, oh, there's a pizza hut there. You go there. Make sense? Yeah. You may not go to uh, Milan or Dubai or somewhere, the Casca or Dubai with pizza, but you prefer to buy uh, pizza from Pizza Hut. Because you store this information here. Make sense now? Okay, so that's the function of what we call a consciousness. That's this that different form, you know, what do you call it here in in early uh, Western psychology, they call what ID, ego, and super ego. You know that what's mean? What's mean? What's mean by e this is from 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 uh, Freud, right? E ID, ego, super ego. What's that? You can learn this. Ego it is yourself. Uh huh. And the yeah. ego is when you're thinking uh, you're above self and everybody else. And super ego is extremely thinking you're higher than uh, Super ego, something like it. Okay, let me see. Anyway, yeah, let, let, me, let me add this one quick. You guys started this college before, right? Okay, let me cut here. ID, ego, super ego here. 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 The ID is the one that say, I want it. I want it now. Right? You see that? Okay, this is the idea. I want it now. Right? Ego, maybe I can analyze people, don't do that. Let's say anything. Right? But for the ego, we negotiate. I may find, I mean, maybe I can find a compromise between a, a, an urge to have something and an uh, uh, ideal person, ideal thought. And the, the, um, the real, real listeners, um, or uh, the practical approach. So that's what they call ID, ego, and super, uh, super ego. It's quite different from this kind of um, uh, uh, approach. Okay, so you understand now? All right, so that's why there is what they call the main Buddhist psychology. Of course, um, there's a lot of commentaries that talk about how this five uh, contents uh, interact with the six, and how this is contents interact with the seven, and how this wrappings up to the ego, uh, attachment to the ego, relate to this one. And, and especially uh, what you call this, the number eight is alaya. This be important, according to Buddhism. Remember I told you, let's see, uh, when we talk about karma, right? When we think, do things, whether good, we create good karma, bad karma, right? And in any, any action, any speech, any thought that we have, we raise the, we store in this one, in this eye consciousness. And uh, according to Buddhist view, uh, Buddhist ecology, they, our karma, let's say, whatever we do here in this life, we will be, we, we 
we move on to the next slide in the form of consciousness because we saw all cap of um, karma inside here and according to Buddhist psychology it says that this is the first uh, uh, consciousness that enters the womb and this is the last one to leave the, the body and when we come here when we come to this earth we carry all of our seeds all of the seeds all the commas good, bad, all the picture, all the image remember could you remember things that you have done when you were let's say five or six years old you still remember some? Yeah. you still remember right? not exactly but you still remember some incident right? Mm -hmm. it's a strike out that you really like or don't like or something that's happened to you right? because you blend that seed already in your, in your life make sense? And now, it, when, it's, when it's necessary, or when, when you might come enough, this kind of information will pop up. Is that right? That, that's why you go to the library to study, so that you can remember what the professor or teacher explained for you. Things, and it's a subject, and, and the subject that is in class. Otherwise, you cannot study in a dining hall, or a supermarket, or be down. It's not easy to concentrate. When you might come down enough, you will see the information that that, that may occur here, that may, that you store here. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But like, say for instance, you got the storage area for the seeds. Mm -hmm. you, and if you did some bad karma here mm -hmm. during this lifetime, you know, some people like they are forgiven. Mm -hmm. So does that still stay with the seed? Yeah, they say they have two until they purify them. Okay. And now, you know, it's happened to everyone of us. At night, sometimes we have real dreams, right? Mm -hmm. we, are, we may be in, in some different planets. We may be in different forms of life, right? But when we wake up, oh, wait, we're here now. This is the information we saw. In a Buddhist view, if you believe in reincarnation, last have applied this store here. This like a seed drive. You understand? Know, so you store everything there. And mm -hmm. that's why it may dictate our personality now. Whichever race you are, whichever um, gender we are. Make sense? Okay. So that, that's why sometimes we have some weird personality that people may not recognize. You understand that? And, and so do other people. Make sense? So that's a very important uh, information, especially in Buddhist uh, approach about the mind. So when we, can, when we talk about the, the function of the mind, we need to talk about uh, the relationship uh, amongst the past, present, and the future actions, and so forth. Not, not only in this present life, but also in the past life. But if we don't pay attention much about uh, the, the previous life, if we just start from this lifetime, right? From the time we were, we were born up to now, we accumulate all kinds of information, is that right? Throughout our lives. The, the older we are, the more experience we have. Yes? How do we know that we have all the information from the past life? Like if I was in seven lives ago, mm -hmm. how do I know that I got, you know, all that? That's why I can ask you, forget about the past life. Let's talk, just talk about this lifetime. Oh, okay. Could you remember in detail from the time you were born up to now? Could you? Uh, See not, that? not, not, not possible. See that? Um, if you ha may have the diabetes, if you have a uh, clear mind. Let's say one day you sit there, and you think you try to remember things that you you done and so forth. Let's say just, we just compare today and this morning, today and yesterday. We may not remember all things that we have done yesterday. Not talking about few few year, few decades from from now. You understand that? Unless we really focus our mind. Not talking about the past life. Make sense? Because when when we talk about past life, it means we 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 may change our mm, physical our, our body already. But when we talk about this this body, right? This human body, 
since the time we were born up to now. Many things we could not remember. Even yesterday, even the week, last week, even last month, we remember some. Not all. Because what? Because we're so busy with all the things that that block our mind, that cloud our mind. Yeah. How can we improve this memory? You know, how can we improve this for the test? That, that's what you call here meditation. meditation. When you have the clarity of mind, you could remember much. You could remember things that you learned, things that, that the professor, teacher had explained. With, with the mindfulness. You understand that? We will talk about that. So, but my point I want to explain to you here today is that this is, the, this is storage. It's is all everything. Let me put it this way. Give me you one more example. Let's say a criminal, right? He, he commits some crime and so forth. So he is he paid his debt in the prison for many years, and after that, he went, he, they released him out. He still had that kind of sin, right? And he, he go back to his room, his own room. What happened? He may reject him. No, not yet. He may or may not. Uh, he may, he may join with them to do again, to do crimes again. Mm -hmm. Because he, he planned that shit, understand that? And of course, in the end, he may end up over there. You may, may, may understand that, right? And for us, yes. Let's say you, you let's say whichever major you study now, right? You plan to sit up, what? Engineer, teacher, nurse, right? Pharmacist, and so forth. You understand that? So five years from now, two years from now, and so forth, you will graduate with that kind of diploma because you plan that seat. You, you are learning, you, are, you accumulate knowledge, you gain the experience while you started in school or at work. Until, uh, um, conventionally, uh, officially, you got that diploma. You become a nurse, you become an engineer, you become a teacher, and so forth. Do you understand that? So you have to accumulate many kind of information or knowledge and so forth in order to, to have that kind of um, diploma. You understand that? So that's why you store here. And they use, and um, probably the things you learn today, right? You may not remember all, but probably when you get an order, 40, uh, let's say 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when you are grandparents, grand, grandmom, granddaddy, you still remember something that I explained here. Make sense? Because you plan, you have that seat here. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let us move on then. Mm. Okay, the next one actually is she's not here, she's sick. And um, it's related to Mahaparnivva Sutta. Uh, yeah, the reason why I put here because um, it's related to uh, uh, this is Pali version and the other version is the percent of person. But according to this Pali version, it say it talk about how the Buddha passed away, right? how uh, the Buddha advised the monks and nuns that take my dharma or my um, uh, my rules as your teacher and so forth. But the other tradition, like my higher tradition, in 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 this it's similar title, it say that everyone has Buddha nature. Um, let me tell you a story. Before this sutra, Mahaparinibbana sutra, uh, been translated into Chinese, I think uh, during the um, the third or fourth century, and um, there's many versions of, of this sutra, and um, there's some sutra they say that mm, uh, yes, uh, everyone can, everyone has Buddha nature, everyone has that potential to become Buddha. Uh, except um, the uh, the heaviest, the one who great the heaviest crumbs, the syrup crumbs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the last version of this sutra is say that well, everyone, including the serious uh, criminals, mm -hmm. still have the potential to become Buddha. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really what it said. Uh, even like they had people that was illiterate. Mm -hmm. And they became uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, next week. Is that next week we I will we, we talk about we now. He's an uneducated, uneducated yeah. uh, person, yeah. but he is, is become sis- patriarch in the Zen traditions. Yes. In Buddhism, educate or not, it's not the point. Then how you live life, how you have the wisdom. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that that's a basic one. Okay. Let's let's move to Buddha nature. How to? This is. Yeah. Um, what do you have there? I found. Um, that the Buddha nature was, like you said, the it's in everyone and it allows someone to reach enlightenment and become Buddha. And I know that through the Mahayana scriptures, mm-hmm. um, depending on which school, it could have different meanings.